My name is Joe Robson and I'm the founder of Tried and True Wood Finishes. Tried and True came out of my experience as a cabinet maker and one of the things we learned in the cabinet making trade is that when you apply an oil finish to a piece of natural wood, the finer you prepare the wood, the finer your finish will be. We're going to prepare this surface for using Tried and True Wood Finishes and the basic preparation needs to have the surface cleaned up, meaning the marks from the planing of the board need to be gone and any surface defects that don't want to be included in the final surface need to be taken out now. Sanding is always with the grain. Once you've done your progressive sanding and the board is quite smooth, there are things we can do to the surface to improve not only the look of the wood, but the final end product once the finish is applied. The process is called burnishing, and we'll dust the surface off to make sure that there's no sanding dust left in the pores, and then we'll use steel wool, either natural steel wool or a synthetic steel wool to burnish the surface to increase its sheen. Now that we've prepared this piece of walnut through progressive sanding and dry burnishing, we're ready for the first coat of tried and true wood finish. The product that we'll be using is tried and true Danish oil, and we'll apply a very small amount, our rule of thumb being, if you've used any, you've used enough, and we're gonna use our first coat of Danish oil on the walnut. dip a little bit into the can to moisten the rag that we're going to be using. If you'll unfold the rag and crumple it up a little bit, it'll distribute the finish in the rag. The object of the finishing procedure is to apply a minimal amount of material to the surface. So this moistened rag will allow you to have finish flow from the rag without having a lot on it. So I'll dip it into the can and scrape off as much as I can scrape and then using long with the grain strokes and minimal pressure, apply a very, very thin coating of the finish to the surface. At no time do you want to see the finish bubbling up from the open grain of the wood. The optimum application thickness is actually one one hundredth of an inch. Now once you have seen the color change go all the way across the piece of wood you're working on, without re-dipping the applicator pad, go back with the same pad and even off the surface in the opposite direction that you began. Now we've applied a coat of Danish oil to the surface. We've allowed it to sit for approximately five minutes and we wipe down the surface. And as we wipe it down, only a very minimum amount of oil comes off on the rag, showing us that we've used the proper, very small amount of finish. Now that we've cleaned the surface off, if we want to maximize the effect of an oil finish in between coats, we want to burnish the surface once again. So we can burnish using standard steel wool, which will increase and even out the sheen of the undercoat. and as standard procedure, we'll make a rubbing rag by dipping the piece of cheesecloth into the finish and distributing it in the cloth. And we can re-dip the cloth and scrape it off on the side of the can so that we have 
a minimal amount of material and using long with the grain strokes and a minimum all amount of pressure, but steady pressure, will apply a very thin coat to the surface of the board. And you're seeing the sheen increase. We know that we're adding protective qualities of the finish to the surface. And as we look at the surface, we're developing an even wet, but not puddled application surface. Once we've colored the surface once over, without re-dipping the cloth, go back over the surface and make sure the product is evenly but thinly distributed all over the, the surface of the board. So now we're going to do the final finishing segment for our walnut board. We prep the board with Progressive sanding, we dry burnish the board, we apply a single coat of Danish oil and a coat of the original wood finish over that. Now we're going to apply in the same way the next coat of original wood finish. And this is going to both increase the sheen and increase the protection that the finish gives us. Always concentrating on using as absolutely little finish as possible. It's good economics and more importantly it's good with finishing. So once we've prepared the cloth, dip a little bit, get a minimal amount of product and apply it to the surface. You should just see color change. Once you've seen a color change, you know you've applied enough material. The optimum thickness for application is one one hundredth of an inch. That's not much of an inch. Now that we've allowed the finish to sit on the surface for about an hour, we will take a clean cloth. the surface down. And all we're doing is absorbing any tacky surface material because having used very little to begin with. We don't have very much to take off. Now that the surface is dry for three days, we want to clean it up a little bit and buff it out for its final polish. So we take again a clean dry cloth, lint free, and just go quickly over the surface. Make sure there's no residue. Properly applied, there'll be no residue left on the cloth. Then take whatever you use to burnish in between coats, either steel wool or a synthetic steel wool and go long light strokes with the grain to even out and bring out the sheen. And then for a final polish, a soft chamois cloth with nothing on it will bring out a lasting shine that needs only minimal ma maintenance dusting with a soft cloth that is all the surface should ever need.